Welcome back to Mighty Switch Force. We are now on Incident 9. There's there's no one around you, Patty. <laughs> yeah. Oh. She's been watching too much RoboCop. <laughs> Dead or alive, you're coming with me! She, uh, no, Patty, this isn't Detroit. It's too pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Detroit uh, Detroit doesn't have nearly this, uh, has way more garbage lying around here. I mean, there's garbage in the foreground and the background in this game, but in Detroit it's just like all over the, the actual gameplay screen too, so, yeah. Detroit I have to is suffering say... from its latest Switch epidemic. People are flying left and right with these new Switch companions. It's just such a gamey concept though, because it's just like, what is the Switching doing? Like, I, I'm not gonna seriously, like, contemplate that shit, because nobody, nobody cares. Well, it's her hat that activates it. Yeah, yeah. but it's just, like, what happens in the in the world of the game when she switches the platforms? Well, they pr probably, you know what, they probably have some sort of complicated security system that revolves around Switch helmets. Because, I don't know, the city planners were bored at the time. I have Think to say, of them the as, like, transparent blocks. The voice actress for, for uh, Patty must have had a lot of fun doing this, because she gets really into it, like, going, Yow! And, <laughs> all clear. Wasn't <laughs> well, she, like, the only voice actor they have at all of WayForward? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's probably just uh, one of Cause the... Because I, I know for DuckTales Room Master, they got the cartoon cast. Well, that's because they had uh, Disney uh, work with them at that point in order to get yeah. all that stuff for them. Um, oh, did WayForward do the DuckTales yeah, game? They, yeah, they did the, the, the DuckTales uh, Huh, that's pretty cool. Uh, I downloaded it, I just haven't played it yet. That's pretty much where I stay with all the Wii 4 games. <laughs> oh, well, I've been a, I've been a, I've been a big fan of theirs uh, for years because I bought um um I didn't play the original Shantae, but I got uh, Risky's Revenge basically right after it came out, and that basically just uh, solidified you know how awesome they were for me. Because they can really, uh, they can make some really, really fantastic games when they're given uh, the freedom to do so, you know. Oh, now isn't, I know one of their guys used to work for a lot of the gaming media, Matt Bozon, I think yeah, his name he was. was. A, uh, he was an IGN dude, I think. Yeah. At one point. Actually, I think he might uh, uh, still have done, uh, or maybe it's Mark Bozon. I think they, I do, IGN is thanked in the credits for a lot of their games, so I think... I think they might, uh, it's either the same guy or one of their brothers or whatever. Yeah. I just recognize the name from somewhere. Yeah. Ah. Why is the robot in the, the hot tub? Because it fucking can. Let's go. Eh. I don't know. <laughs> Why did the robot in Persona 3 want to go into the hot spring? I don't think it can feel heat or water. Just sort of uh, dead. Oh, well, no, I understand why in that one. Fan service. Oh, funnily enough, I guess isn't that, uh... Isn't that, um... How would you put it? Emphasized, I guess. Well, I mean, I'm not, I don't think anybody really wants to see fan service of the big, square, blocky robot with absolutely no sexual uh, applications Ted. to it. What? Ted. Oh there's wait, this is the internet. There's, 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 yeah, yeah, there's rule 34 of the companion cube. Wait, wait, you're you're not joking, are you? I'm I, I'll let you decide, uh, Ted. I, I get the you're feeling that's one of the You're going to make me myself, <laughs> aren't you, goddammit? I, I, I get the feeling that's one of those rule 34s that people do just to keep in just, you know, to be funny about it. Yep, most likely. Oh god, damn it. Oh, they like, oh, they anthropomorphize it. They like, don't just give the, 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 the cube, um, a penis or Maybe. Anything. Oh, oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Stick a phallus on something and you can, you know, rule 34 anything. Damn it, John, why did you have to do this to me? No, it actually, you made that. me do it to myself, which makes it even worse. <laughs> you have no one to blame but yourself. No, I can blame you. For what? Implanting a suggestion? Yeah, you want to know who else implants <laughs> suggestions into people? The devil. 
<laughs> Here's my card. Oh, Lou Cipher. <laughs> Sounds like a swell dude. I thought we were gonna make an Inception joke, but whatever. <laughs> oh, sorry, disappoint. The, the, Lu uh, Lucifer's in the Inception? No, it's about planting memories and ideas into people's heads. No. Ah, uh, here we go. How often have you uh, gone back to this game, Ryan? Not too often, mostly because... <laughs> oh, that's one thing that bugs me. The game can be incredibly pixel perfect about that at some points. Because, like, if even one of your pixels touches the side of a box when you're changing it, you'll get hit and die. It's not it's not terribly guilty of it, though, to its credit. Like, I, I can only recall this level and around the end of the game where it gets really tight. It yeah, happens a least, little bit more in the in the sequel, unfortunately. At least, at least the enemy stayed dead. Yeah. Yes. Um. The, the, again, the game the game is you know it's beating the level and then it's also trying to get the fastest time and I guess they just don't want you to get hung up on killing the same enemy over and over again. Yeah. Well, more often than not, the enemies are um, more obstacles uh, than like just sort of in there to try yeah. to kill you. And they're also part of the puzzle, too. Yeah. Like, it's really only stuff like the bats that are just there to sort of be in the way. Um, most of the time, anyway. And also, I gotta wonder why the they last make five her... hours. <laughs> well, they're not just... They're not really scrubbing the car. They're just sort of standing there, putting their uh, sponges on the car. And hoping that that'll... Why did you restart the game? Um... No, that was that, that was me uh, exporting. Sorry. Oh. They're hoping it'll make them look like they're working. And no prisoner number forty-six. That is not how you use a garden hose. Stop that. Um, this is one of the more uh, non-linear levels, if I remember. Yeah, correctly. and that's why this one takes a while. I don't know how they expect you to get it at one twenty par, but um, yeah, memorization. Me memorization, I guess, but still. Yeah, there's no way you're getting this in 120 par on your first try. No. Because you also gotta you also gotta plan out a specific route so that the the blocks are in the uh, position you want them to be in uh, when you start. Ah, uh, jeez. No, no, you were good. You we're good. Go back. <laughs> there we go. Uh, this the, it, it looks like the, the sort of puzzle gimmick that can, you know, make you think, make you overthink things a little. It tends to do that in the later levels, yeah. It gets even it gets even more complex when you get to the sequel, and it has three different colors as opposed to just two. Yeah. Ah. Uh, also, I hate those guys. Yeah. You can't kill them, and they're just annoying. No, you can kill them. It just. Well, you can't just shoot them. You need to. Yeah. Um. Shoot them from behind. Oh, wait, or, if you, or if you have the super blaster, you can shoot them instantly. But wait, you can kill I think them by shooting th them from behind. I thought that. Uh, I no, you, have to, I you can shoot them from down behind. enough hits because I recall killing them. Yeah, they go. They die. I, did, I never. I've never found See? a situation. Well, I guess you know, getting them blown up by the the remote bomb yeah. is one thing. But I've never really had a situation where I could just shoot them to death. And there's really nothing stopping you from ignoring them entirely. Well, no, you gotta walk. Sometimes, them sometimes they're, they're in their dodge. way. Well, I, like in this room right here, you can just get on the platform to save the girl, then just go back up without ever having to touch the floor. Mm. Mm. Maybe I'm just not as hardcore as you guys are. It's not hardcore, it's basic thinking. Hard if there's a threat, you, John, if, there's a threat it's a, if there's a threat, you either kill it or avoid it. John, you've known me for how long? You know that for me, basic thinking is hardcore. <laughs> you don't need to rub it in. <laughs> All right, and that's the last prisoner. Yep, now we just have to make our way back. Yeah. Which that's... is more often than not the thing that kills your par time. Yeah. I have a question. Do any prisons actually use the whole striped look for their clothes? No, I, they go with orange. Uh, well, not, not, I was about to say, not anymore. They go for orange because it's easier to see if they're uh, escaped in Convict D. Well, actually, uh. you're, you're all, all prisoners are convicts, but if they're escaped, then it's easier to spot that someone's a prisoner with the sense with the bright orange. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Unless if you pull a Shawshank and drag a a, a nice weighted a nice press suit 
with you through a sewage pipe. Do, that do you think Naruto gave them that idea? Um, I don't no. know. Does Naruto ever get arrested? Nobody's easy as hell to see. Eh, <laughs> penis arrangement of blocks. Huh? Oh. I wouldn't have seen that if you hadn't pointed it out. Well, I wouldn't have seen that if John didn't make me look at the Rule companion 34. Poor, poor now there are penises everywhere for Ted. I'm sorry, I just can't ever stop <laughs> seeing penises. <laughs> that says so much about you, Ted. Which is odd, because I don't think there's an actual single penis in this entire game. Because all of the characters are female, except for the one uh, robot who is a robot, so I don't think it even has one of those. You never know. <laughs> it might just have a hidden compartment. And I'm not talking about a cigarette tray. Well, I mean, you could be talking about a cigarette tray. You never know. You see, ladies and gentlemen, this is what happens when a game doesn't have story. <laughs> What, we start talking about penises? I thought yeah. that every game commentary would devolve to that if you give us enough time. Maybe. But there's something a little more monotonous. Well, about not monotonous. This. It's an incredibly fun game to play. Yes, but commentate over? Um, I don't know. We're only two parts in, so I would like to give us at least. I don't know. I, I don't know. I think that's probably just. <laughs> <laughs> Check and me. <laughs> mate, like having sex. You're welcome. <laughs> well, I I if we're British, it might just mean friend. Oh. Isn't that, wait, I, I more think Australian when I hear that, like, like, oi, mate, Barbie and shrimp and crocodiles. No, they say it in, U in the UK, too. Oh. Also, I apologize to any uh, potential Australians that might be watching. That was bad, and I should feel bad. You should feel bad about this entire part of commentary, Ted. Yeah, most likely. <laughs> Penises everywhere. Um, how many incidents does the, the first game have again? 16, I think. Okay. And then there's the bonus ones, which you don't show because... Reasons? Question mark? Um, my bullshit excuse this time is that I want people to actually have something to play when they play themselves because it's a puzzle game. Uh, yeah. Good job, Ryan. Right. That almost sounded like you actually meant it. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the bonus scenarios, they're just pretty much more of the same thing, though, right? Yeah. yeah, basically. And there aren't that many of them. There's only like five. Considering this is a, actually a cheap puzzle game, anyone who has a Wii U should probably just pick the game up and play it along with us. Well, it'd be something to um, play for your Wii U, for one thing. Yeah. It's, it's a little late in the playthrough for me to suggest that now, though. <laughs> oh, what was Whoops. the nice thing about the bonus section, though, is, uh, not bonus, the bonus levels, though, is that when the game originally came out on 3DS the first time, it was uh, just the, the levels that Ryan's showing up right now, but then they offered the extra levels as a free update. Like, not not just D, not DLC, it was just something that you could get for free without having to, uh, to do anything. Which I actually think uh. is really cool of them, because this is something that they could easily have charged like two bucks for. And you know, people probably wouldn't have complained, but they gave it away for free anyway. Despite Mighty Switch Force being one of the games that uh, WayForward uh, puts their own money into, uh, into making. So, I thought that was really neat. Ah, uh, yeah. That's pretty cool, yeah. The WayForward, they really make their money via the, the license games they are hired to create, are they? And then every yeah, once in they, a while, they make they a lot of funds. they make a lot of movie games. Like they made the Thor game, they made uh, some Cartoon Network games, and you know, it, it they're probably like the only company I can think of that makes licensed games that aren't immediately like crap. Like I, I know that they I don't think that their licensed games generally like do as well as like their their original stuff, which you know is goes without saying. But you know, um. They, they make most of their money from that stuff, but they still manage to put a lot of effort into them, which is nice. Yeah, that, and that's cool of them. Like, you know, it, 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 a lot of licensed games just tend to suck by default, and I don't like that, because there's really no excuse to 
well, at least not make a fun game. Well, no, there is some excuse because um, they're trying I, to follow like the story of it or whatever. From uh... what I hear, like a lot of like you, you take your general superhero blockbuster movie, the 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 studio will contact the people who make the game like eight months before the movie's supposed to come out. They won't tell them any of the movie's plot details because <laughs> they want to keep that under wraps. And they say, "Here, make a game now," and they give them maybe like twelve dollars. And then yeah. they say, go. <laughs> $12. Honestly, I don't even think it's about budget. It's just whether they don't have enough time to make a quality game. Yeah, $12. It looks like, like we're sticking to 8-bit for this one, boys. Because, I mean, it's not, like, it's not like the parents will care. If they see a game with Spider-Man or Superman on it, they'll buy it for their Oi, kids no matter Oi, the Spider-Man like games are good. Okay, so they, 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 they vary in quality. Good. They var- yeah, they vary in quality. But if, they, if there's a superhero... On the on the game's cover, parents will buy it for their kids no matter how good it actually ends up being, is more the thing, so. And that's how jaded gamers like us are born. <laughs> <laughs>